You're listening to the Study Legal English podcast, the world's first legal English podcast, helping lawyers and law students become fluent in legal English. Hello and welcome to the Study Legal English podcast. I am your host, Louise, and today I've got a very interesting guest on the show. Quite a while ago, I came across a really brilliant article by this person about tools to teach legal English, and I contacted her to say, wow, what a great article. I met her a couple of weeks ago at Suprash in Poland at the Share and Gain conference, where she presented a really interesting workshop all about activities to do in your legal English classes. So who is the person that I'm talking about? It's Alexandra Luksak. Hi Alexandra, thank you for coming on the show. Hi Louis, thank you for inviting me. And uh, we are here in Split because we're both going to the ULITA, the European Legal English Teachers Association conference, which is being held here. So a few things about Alexandra. She's the head of the English Legal Language Department at Kosminski University in Warsaw, where she runs a number of legal English courses, such as preparation for tolls exam. She also runs a website, which is www.luxac.com. .edu.pl. It's got a great blog, some interesting articles, and she's also developed a site which is really helpful for learning and teaching legal English, and that's called Pustulka, P-U-S-T-U-L-K-A dot edu dot P-L, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Let's go into the questions. Can you tell us about Pustulka? What exactly is it? So, Pustulka is a web-based application for testing. It has always been my dream to have such a tool that will save my time, automatize my work, and let me concentrate on something more creative. So, making exercises rather than sitting and checking them. Mm -hmm. And I've been testing many applications and a lot of software myself and unfortunately none of those turned out to be ideal and one day in a beautiful town of Dubrovnik my husband said he would write it for me. So Pustulka is an application or software uh, which works on computers It works on mobile devices, so you can also use it on your mobile phone and on your tablet. It's web-based, so you don't need to register to do an exercise, you just go to a website. We created it together, so we can say that the team consisted of a code developer and an ESP expert, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. <laughs> so far. There are six types of exercises, I think, you can create. So there are multiple choice exercises, drop-down lists, checkbox lists, short answers and long answers, and a type of exercise which I couldn't find anywhere else mm -hmm. and which was really a must for my needs, for especially advanced law students, but not only gapped text. Mm, mm, mm. So not just a sentence, one sentence with a gap, but a full-length text composed of several paragraphs with as many gaps as you want. Mm -hmm. So Pustuka works in this way that teachers create exercises and out of exercises they build tests. So I think it gives teachers a lot of possibilities and it's more flexible. The exercises the teachers create can be private, so only an author can use this exercise and see this exercise. They can be public, so anybody who has a link can do an exercise online. And this summer I've been uh, conducting <laughs> or running a project called One Exercise a Day, developing or adding one exercise every day to this public pool of exercises and there can also be 
exercises which other teachers can see. So teachers can, can share exercises. So teachers can copy exercises from other teachers and then they can edit them and use for their own purposes. Yes, I follow you on Facebook and uh, I recommend listeners to follow uh, <laughs> Alexandra's page on Facebook. It's Per Se. Per Se Legal and Business English mm-hmm. on Facebook. In my notifications, I do get these exercises every day coming through, which are, you know, really, really yeah, helpful. So tomorrow, I think tomorrow, we are going to have the 70th exercise this oh, summer. Gosh. <laughs> oh, such a long summer. <laughs> and... Uh, We've talked about why you set it up, how it works. How can Postulka help legal English students and teachers? In my opinion, how it helps students is quite obvious. So it helps them develop their competence in, in legal English. Another benefit is that doing these kind of tests and quizzes, exercises in general, they also develop their digital competence because now there are more and more tests and exams which are the form of an online test and when I talk to students at the beginning sometimes they are quite uh, reluctant and they are afraid that uh, a machine will assess uh, them but then I try you know to show them that I can always go through the answers I mean I, not the machine, and add some extra points if there is an answer which had not been included in the alternative answers. And the same, I think, refers to the teachers, because I have observed that teachers are rather afraid of technology. So with this application, if they are eager to try and learn how to use it. I think they can develop their digital competence because Ustulka has been written so that it's very easy to use. It can be also a good starting point for teachers to start using technology in the classroom. Yes, I've tried it out yeah. and uh, yeah, it was very straightforward mm-hmm. and you know, I can see that it's a great way for students to start using technology in the classroom and the same for teachers. I have recorded quite uh, a lot of tutorials which are to be found on Postulka website so if anyone is interested you can go to help mm-hmm. section and watch the tutorials. Excellent, great. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me. Yeah. I will, I will be happy to help. Is there a difference between a paid version and a free version? So, uh, for students, it's always free. Only teachers need to pay when they want to have their account. Mm. So, we give them an option to set up a trial account just to start with, to see what it looks like and how it works. Mm-hmm. The paid version gives this full access and unlimited number of tests and unlimited possibilities of copying what other teachers allow for copying. But the paid version, I think, is not very expensive. Uh, Teachers, uh, not only in Poland, I think everywhere, are are not very keen on spending a lot of money on some resources. So the price is at the equivalent of three euro per month. Three euros a month. What about like a yearly version? That would be 30 euro. Very reasonable. And I mean, for listeners who are listening, a lot of them are students. So great for them. It's free. (laughs) Yes, for students it's always free. I strongly recommend that you go and have a look at the website because there's loads of exercises. And as Alexandra said, she's been putting on a lot of public exercises, which are in lots of different areas. Great for training your legal English vocabulary. Yes, I try to add exercises at different levels from B1 to C1, C2. Now the pool of public exercises is about 120 exercises. And if a student has a teacher who uses Pustulka, they will also get some codes to use many more prepared by their teachers. As a student if you're trying to learn legal English vocabulary it's quite difficult to do and so if you've got some function online where you can do some quizzes and do some exercises Mm -hmm. that's a, a really nice thing to do and for teachers 
great because, as you mentioned, you don't have to like sit and mark loads of papers. The marking happens yeah. automatically. Exactly, and I think it's much more creative and enjoyable to sit down and uh, write an exercise than to sit down and check 10 or 20 yeah. the same exercises. So time saved is one of the biggest advantage for teachers. Mm -hmm. For students, there are also many advantages because they can revise again and again. So if an exercise goes not exactly well, they can revise or repeat the exercise again on the next day and, and learn. Very good. I mentioned your blog, Luxac, L -U -C -Z -A -K .edu pl You've got on there a really good list of legal English resources. Can you talk us through a few of your favourite resources? So the ones which I used most often and I even kind of force my students to use are Memrise and Quizlet. So they are both apps for flashcards. So you can create your own flashcards there or you can copy flashcards from other users. And uh, what I did a few years ago, I have created sets of flashcards which correspond to the chapters of the book Tolls Preparation course book, which I use with my students. And I prepared that together with my students, so it wasn't my and only my work. I even did some research at that time comparing the results of the students who prepared for tests using Memrise with the results of the students who prepared for tests not using Memrise mm -hmm. with the results of the students who contributed content to Memrise. And it was predictable, but really those who were the creators of the content scored much better than those who only learned with Memrise, but those who did not use Memrise for some reasons, the scores they gained were the lowest. Mm. So that was an interesting kind of proof for me and also for my students that it makes sense. So Memrise was the first application we used, but Memrise is uh, quite time consuming. It takes quite a long time to go through a course, especially when a course is composed of, let's say, 150 items. But you can stop at any time and return. Uh, later I heard about Quizlet, so I transferred the content from Memrise to Quizlet and my students now can use both. Maybe an interesting case will encourage students who listen to, to use these uh, sets. So one of my students two or three years ago introduced an idea of what we call now a flipped classroom mm -hmm. to his learning just intuitively. He worked with Memrise and Quizlet on his own before we started working on certain content in class. Mm -hmm. So when he came to class, he had already done a lot of work with Memrise and Quizlet at home. So in class, he only revised and recycled material. And he was really very successful mm -hmm. and he passed all advanced with one of the highest scores in the history of my university. <laughs> <laughs> so close to C2. And for the listeners who are thinking, uh, what's flipped classroom learning? It's basically when the students kind of learn the instructional content at home and then the teacher acts more as a supporter of their learning yes, in class. Yes, so it's like doing your homework before coming to class so some reading or some it's very often based on some blended learning so with some internet resources and then when students or learners come to class they basically use already the knowledge they gained in practice they spend time solving some tasks or working on some joint project mm -hmm. together making a presentation or writing something doing a translation so they do work before class than after class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why it is called flipped. And speaking about Memrise and Quizlets, what's the main difference between them? Memrise requires students to do more writing and it's based on some 
research connected with memory and it sends you some notifications mm -hmm. that you have to sit down and do some work or you know because there is this image of a flower or a plant that you grow from a seed when you work you water the seed and it grows and it grows and when you stop working you stop watering it and it fades away <laughs> ah. and Quizlet it's faster and mm -hmm. you can like just browse through you don't have to learn you can only just flip through the flashcards mm -hmm. and uh, students also like the option which is called Quizlet Live so we can set some games for the classroom and they work on their mobile devices in groups and there is some competition involved and they can see the results on the screen and it's all available in the free version of Quizlet so you mentioned your lists that you've created sure. and I will put links to those in the podcast description for you listeners okay. to see and by all means listeners if you want to create vocabulary lists from episodes of the Study Legal English podcast, please do. I'd appreciate it if you write in the title something like the Study Legal English podcast episode vocabulary list. Mm -hmm. If it's a helpful resource for you to use, do use it. So any final tips for learning legal English? Uh, learning legal English is definitely very hard work. It really requires students to be systematic and to revise a lot. I myself try to recycle material with my students a lot. When I do tests, I always tell them that they may expect some material from previous chapters in the book as well, because in this way I force them to revise. I'm also thinking about this flipped classroom redesigning my teaching a little bit so that my students do more work before class and they come prepared mm. and generally I think reading a lot is very useful for legal English so staying in touch with this kind of language and also seeing some terms and collocations again and again. When I teach, I always tell my students that if you want to write well, you have to read a lot. And doing things yourself, trying to translate, to do some extra work on your own. Mm -hmm. Now we have more and more resources where students can really like a quiz on their mobile phone. Or I like, once like came across a quote. It wasn't about legal English, but I think we can transfer it to legal English. It was about ESP. And it read, doesn't matter, it's boring. It's ESP. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> let's not expect it will be fascinating. But I think it can be enjoyable and yes. it really can be rewarding mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. when you see the results of your work, and when you see progress, it can be motivating. But for that, you really need to work hard. Yes. Something for, for students to bear in mind is that remember why you are learning Legal English. And that is because you're most likely going to need it in your future career. And mm -hmm. if you start now, if you're starting at, at university, then great. As you say, they will need it in the future, but this future can be a bit remote. Yeah. But if we set a goal, such as an exam, yeah. it's also, I think, a very good uh, yeah. step in mm -hmm. the whole process. Mm -hmm. Having a, a big goal and then little steps to get yeah. there. Great. So um, great to have Alexandra on the show, finally. Check out her website. Check out Pastulka as well. And I recommend following her on Facebook. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me on the show. For you listeners out there, uh, if all of the links that we've mentioned today will be in the summary of the podcast. And you can find more information at studylegalenglish.com. So thank you for listening and see you next time.